In this video, we're going to discuss linear programming models, and we're going to show a short example of a, an LP, or linear programming model, inside Excel. And so we'll cover this Blue Ridge Hot Tubs example of a model uh, using linear programming and Microsoft Excel Solver. So um, you should already know about uh, linear programming optimization models through the lecture. But um, here are some key things that you need to know uh, in preparation of your LP problem. First, we have to understand um, what are the decision variables or what are the x's. Next, we need to know what the uh, y variables are. So x's is um, the input variables. The y is actually our output. It could be things like profits, use of fuel, labor costs, and those kinds of things. And then also we want to know what our constraints are. So typically when we're dealing with manufacturing, it's the uh, materials that might be uh, available to us. Other times it might be miles between cities or maybe the number of workers that are available to assemble uh, some kind of product. So in the, uh, the basic formulization, formulization is first to be able to understand what our objective is. And typically it's a maximum, maximization or a minimization problem. And we have to understand what are the variables that we can control that can determine whether we want to maximize our profit, perhaps minimize our costs, or minimize the percent scrapped. Then we have to understand our constraints. So our constraints could be something the the number of uh, materials available. Uh, perhaps if we're manufacturing a product and there might be two of one variable of one material type that goes into every product, we have to understand each of those. In order to be able to um, determine the proper output, if all of the functions are linear, we can then set up a linear programming problem and then have a proper min or max output from that. So let's take a look um, at, um, here's a basic algebra the formatting for the problem, but let's take specifically um, this example of Blue Ridge hot tubs. So Blue Ridge hot tubs has two types of hot tubs. It has aqua spas and hydroluxes, right? So these are models just like you might consider um, like your favorite automobile manufacturer uh, may have like a quarter ton pickup and then a half ton pickup or it might be they might have um, well, like for example some manufacturers uh, like uh, Toyota produce um, a car that is made for the Toyota brand and the other is made for the Lexus brand right like the ES300 versus uh, the Avalon so um, in this particular example, uh, what we're dealing with is that the aqua spa itself um, is going to be our ver one of our variables, our x variables. And in order to be able to produce one aqua spa, you need to have one pump, nine hours of labor, and 12 feet of tubing. And this will produce $350 in profit. So every time that you build one, you get... $350 in profit, and you must spend uh, one pump, nine hours, and 12 feet of tubing. Now, in this other uh, model, the Hydrolux, right, which is going to be our X2 variable, also it takes one pump, but it takes less labor, but more tubing. And when you, when you um, sell the Hydrolux, you get $300 in profit. Now, Imagine that you had um, some type of idea. You're like, okay, well, I want to maximize my profit. However, these are some of your constraints because you only have 200 pumps on hand, potentially uh, 1,566 hours of labor, so that would be people, and then 2,880 feet of tubing available. Now, the common uh, train of thought is that you might just take 200 pumps and and make 200 aqua spas right 
And this is common um, thought process that is usually mistaken because it doesn't necessarily take into account um, some of the variables that could occur with this other manufacturing process. So if you might do this and you would see that if you used all of your pumps for the unit profit, um, you would be looking at, uh, you know, like 700 or so, um, I think that's the right number, or $70,000 worth of profit. However, we still have to do the math to see if we have enough labor to do that, enough feed of tubing. Well, as you calculate all these by hand, uh, the, the uh, solver problem that we're going to outline here will do that for us and determine if this is really the right way to be able to solve this problem. So we have five steps in formulating an LP problem. The first is to understand the problem. And in this particular case, we want to maximize um, the profit. We have to identify the decision variables. And our decision variables in this case is how many aqua spas and how many hydroluxes. So we have x, the first decision variable, which is x1, is the number of aqua spas produced. And x2 is the number of hydroluxes. So now we have to state this objective function as linear. Now, linear just simply means we don't have any exponents. So there's, there's none of, nothing that says x squared or x cubed, etc. Right? That's pretty much what linear means. That means if we're going to have basic algebra, it's going to be something ax, right? And then x is going to be linear. All right. And we have to make this as a combination of the decision variables. So in this particular state, we say, we know that we want to maximize profit, so we say it's a maximization. We know that the aqua spas were $350 profit times every um, input. So the input is one aqua spa. And then $300 profit for every one hydrolux. So this is our algebraic formula that determines our objective. So this is our objective function. All right, so the next thing we have to look at is the constraints as a linear combination of the decision variables. So basically, each um, each of the spas requires one pump. So that's why we have one times the number of um, aqua spas plus one times the number of hydroluxes has to be less than or equal to 200 because that's how many is on hand. All right. So this is also the same for labor. However, the aqua spas needed nine hours of label, labor. So we have to take nine times the aqua spas plus six times the hydroluxes because the hydroluxes needed six hours of labor. And when you add those together, it has to be less than 1566. So then uh, the same with the tubing. We, um, the aqua spa took 12 and the hydrolux took 16. And when you multiply those out and combine them together, it has to be less than or equal to 288. So we have created those constant combinations. Now we also have to identify any upper or lower bounds. And typically what we have to say is that we cannot produce less than zero. So x1 has to be greater than or equal to 0, and x2 has to also be greater than or um, equal to 0. And a lot of times this is what's called a non-negativity constraint. All right? So we need to put these together into our basic algebra. And so we now know what our, uh, our input variables are. And X1 is the number of aqua spas. X2 is the number of hydroluxes. We have our main um, linear um, problem. And then we have basically the constraints, what that linear problem is subject to. Now, I'm going to pause for a moment. I'm going to come over here to Excel. And I'm going to show you how all these go together. Now, uh, one thing I want to make note of is all of this needs to be written in your Excel workbook. So I would say that in all of your homework assignments, make sure that this is written. 
Also, what I want you to make sure of in your um, Excel is that we identify um, how all of these pieces are going together. So we have our objective function at the top, and we have our constraints below. And if you do this correctly, your algebra that is written below here should match how everything is put together up here. All right. So in the next video, we're going to combine all of these things together, and uh, you'll see how all of this works out.